Okay. Now the next topic is about long lived assets. Now see, this is your balance sheet. We will divide the asset side into two parts. The top part we will call this as typically as fixed assets, and these assets we will call them as current assets. Now these fixed assets are also called as long lived assets. Now I said that there is a concept that we use in accounting, which is called as historical cost concept. What we said about this is that if I purchase an asset for hundred rupees, let's say it's a piece of land, no depreciation. Now next day the price in the market is one twenty. A day after that price in the market is ninety. I do not worry about these prices. The asset would remain in my balance sheet at ninety because we would follow historical cost concept. Sorry, the asset will remain in my books at hundred because we follow historical cost concept. Now, let's say this is my land, hundred. I have one inventory here, which is my current asset. Now I purchase inventory for fifty. If the value in the market is seventy, we will ignore this because if the inventory price in the market is increased, of course, automatically that would reflect higher amount of sales. But if the value in the market has become thirty or twenty, then we will say that. For inventory, both in IFRS and US GAAP, we said cost or market value, whichever is lesser. Of course, there were differences in US GAAP and IFRS, but on an average, it was the lesser amount that we chose to show. So, inventory, assuming a price scenario of thirty, we will show it at thirty. Now, my question is, if I am doing that, am I not violating the historical cost concept? When I am showing it at thirty, I am not showing it at hundred. That means I am not using the historical cost. So, can you look at the two sets of assets carefully and tell me what could be the reason why we use conservatism here, whereas we do not use that logic here on the fixed assets? Okay. Yes. We are not going to sell this in short period of time. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, is the intention to hold the asset. The difference is in this word called intention. That when I buy these fixed assets, let it be land, let it be building, planted machinery, my intention is not to sell them and make profit. My intention is that I want to use them for a good amount of time, and then by uses of those assets, I would like to either save cost or earn revenue. Whereas my intention with inventory is that I want to sell it in the market and earn profit. Therefore, you would see that if you have a building, and let's say that value of that building is about thirty lakhs, and suddenly what you realize is that I want to sell this building and buy a new one, then. The moment you decide that you are going to sell this building, then this building is revalued. Of course, it would differ on accounting standard, but on a broader level, this building will be revalued, and then it will be showed at market prices. So, did you understand what I said here? That building, which is a fixed asset, should be shown at historical cost. But if my intention with that building changes and I decide to sell it, then even this building, which is got book value thirty, would be shown at the market prices. Are you okay with this? So now this topic is entirely about long lived assets. So we'll have good amount of discussion on depreciation methods or how do you do accounting for long lived. This is the first syllabus, which says distinguish between costs that are capitalized and costs that are expense in the period in which they are incurred. Now, in, I'm assuming that in case if you've attended the session that we did on debit and credit, or assuming that you've seen that video, what you know is that when I spend money. Now, what either that would be an expense that I am spending it, and I would expect immediate benefit, or that would be a asset, and both of them are nature of debit. Both of them are debits. So now, what happens is that if I am spending money, I will have to decide. If I am spending some money, I will have to decide that whether I would have the benefit out of it immediately, or whether this expenditure will give me benefit for a prolonged period of time. If if you are immediate. Benefit is immediate, then we will show it as a expense. But if you have a long-term benefit, then it would be capitalized, 
and then it will be shown as a a set. So now this is something that you can probably write down. Just write down these four points. Done writing. Okay, I'm assuming that you done that. See, let's say you spent hundred rupees. Let's say you spent hundred. Now you are contemplating, you are trying to decide whether this hundred should be shown as expenditure or it is to be capitalized and shown as an asset. Now let's assume that you decided that you wanted to capitalize this particular expenditure. Now the moment you've capitalized, which means it has not been shown as an expenditure. And the fact that you capitalize, you will have higher amount of assets. Yes, so that's what. Now the fact that you've capitalized, that means you have less amount of expenses. Less amount of expenses will mean more amount of profit. profit. Therefore, the amount of equity will be higher because ultimately your profits will load up to your equity. Now, if I show it as an expense, it would be an outflow from cash flow from operations. But if I decide to capitalize, then it would be an outflow from cash flow from investments because it's like purchasing an asset. Therefore, higher cash flow from operations, higher operating cash flow compared to expensive, and it would also result in higher earning in the first year, but lower earnings in the subsequent year because now we will have depreciation. If I wouldn't have capitalized, there wouldn't have been any depreciation. But the fact that I have capitalized now in the subsequent years, I will have to charge an amount of depreciation so that my earnings would be relatively lower, but my equity will still be higher because in my equity, that entire if I have an asset of hundred, that entire hundred was added to my equity, and then it would be reduced in the form of depreciation over the period of let's say five years, twenty, 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 twenty. But whereas when I expense it, the entire hundred is reduced from my equity immediately on time zero itself. Any questions you want to ask? See, if you decided to expense, this is your balance sheet. This is your income statement. You have an expense of hundred. On your equity, it would result into negative hundred. Whereas when you decided to capitalize it, you will not have any expense, but you will have an asset of hundred. Nothing goes on to your equity, but ultimately, which means that compared to this, you have higher equity of hundred. Isn't it? This is time zero. This is time zero. At time one, nothing will happen here because there is no asset. But at time one, we will have to charge depreciation of, let's say, twenty five years. So we we'll charge depreciation of twenty. So now this excess depreciation will go and reduce your equity, so which will become eighty. But at any point of time, that it will still be eighty, still higher than this entire reduction of hundred. Now this is about interest, which says that interest incurred during construction is to be capitalized, and then capitalized interest is added to assets value and depreciated over the life of the asset. So what it means is, 
Let's say that I have taken a loan and the amount of loan is 50 lakhs. My interest rate on this is 10%. So interest is 5 lakhs. Now this is my balance sheet. What I say is that I am constructing a building and let us say that I have already spent about 100 lakhs on construction which might be raw material labor everything. Since I have taken this loan for construction of this building, I am not going to show this interest as an expenditure. I am going to add it to the cost of my building. This is called as capitalization of interest. So instead of showing 5 interest as an expenditure, it would be added to the cost of building. But till what time I can do it? Till the time my asset is not operational. So if I am taking 3 years to construct my building, so this is where my building is constructed. Then till this time whatever interest that I pay on a loan specifically taken to construct this building can be capitalized. But once this building is operational, if I have to pay any interest after this period, it should be expensed out as it is. Are we okay with this? So I don't know if you have heard of this that uh, there were certain reports by a few analysts. There is this company called DLF Realty. So what these guys were basically doing is, see what happens in real life scenario when we are studying it, studying it is fairly straightforward. But what if, you know, you have 70 projects happening at the same time. Right? And on these 70 projects, let's say you have taken funding of about 1000 CR of loan. Now, in real life basis, you wouldn't really allocate that this loan is taken for this project. Right? And even if you do that, an analyst who is not a part of your company wouldn't know that how much of loan is taken for what. So let's say that out of the 70, 35 projects are done. So ideally what should company do is that half of this interest should not be capitalized. But then the remaining interest, even after 35 projects were done, would be capitalized onto remaining 35 projects. Right? So a lot of uh, analysts, what they said is that a DLF was never really charging, this is being recorded, I should not have said this, that uh, I'll have to sit and edit this now. DLF was charging that interest and it was not being shown as expenditure. So unnecessarily the level of assets and in, in case of DLF it was inventory. So that interest was going into inventory which was building. That was being inflated and profits were inflated. Whereas in real life scenario their profits were lesser than what they were actually showing on the surface. Making sense? Let's move on. <coughs> 